Hi there Cherry Pies, this is going to be part video response to a video that Egyptian made about her decidedly non-traditional labyrinth tarot deck and it's also going to be in a way as well some general advice for those of you who are grappling with non-traditional decks or struggling to make the move from tarot to oracle or vice versa. Um, I just want to give you a few pieces of advice that I think might be helpful. With regard to working with a deck that is non-traditional in terms of the colour scheme that it's using, um, if it is a 78 card tarot deck by name, but it doesn't look to you like a traditional deck, it doesn't use traditional symbolism, it's really making you feel quite confused, um, and that's hindering the process of learning with it. I would suggest, if you actually really want to learn with it, if you feel the desire to not let it go, but in fact to study with it and kind of have a breakthrough with it, then I would suggest that it's probably come into your life for a reason. Um, quite often we are challenged by decks throughout our life studying tarot in a way which kind of challenges us to deepen our understanding of what the imagery mean, means, what colours mean, um, what different atmospheres kind of mean within the cards and different kind of symbols that you haven't perhaps come across before. I think if you really feel moved and called to work with a deck, then it's probably come into your life to help you challenge your prior perceptions of what certain colours mean or what certain imagery means. So I think that's quite exciting and I think often also it's there to help you move through resistance, it's there to help you kind of expand your horizons in terms of what you think about each tarot message or about the colours that are being used. For example, Egyptian's issue with Labyrinth Tarot, and I'm going to come to that kind of advice giving stage in a moment, Egyptian's issue with Labyrinth Tarot in particular is that there are traditional colours being used in each of the four suits, but they do not correspond with the ordinary elements that we would normally perceive them to kind of be in alignment with. So that's thrown her for a loop, and I completely get that. And actually looking at Labyrinth Tarot, I can understand why she's having those difficulties. Um, so I really think sometimes when we work with a deck which uses non-traditional colour schemes or non-traditional imagery, and it throws us for a loop, it can often demand that we deepen our understanding of what the colours mean or what imagery actually means and, and what the messages mean in each tarot card. So that's kind of exciting. I think if you want to stick with it, you should stick with it. I also think, however, that if you've, if you've come to the end of your rope with it, if it started to be something that your consciousness just can't filter through and make a proper connection with, then it's also perfectly okay to, um, to abandon the deck. And I'll explain to you a couple of key ways in which it would be useful to kind of recycle a deck or get a new deck into your life without necessarily paying for one, but through making some kind of exchange. I'll explain that at the end of the video. So, with regard to Egyptian's query about the Labyrinth Tarot, her issue with the Labyrinth Tarot is, is this. The Major Arcana appears to me to be all kind of black and white, or kind of like a charcoal effect, so she has no issue with that whatsoever. And pentacles are represented as gold, which um, Egyptian kind of said she could see as being to do with money and the material realm, so there's no issue with that. Um, but... <laughs> Um, the cups are, are red, they are represented as flaming red vessels, which is kind of off-putting because we so often expect cups to be, um, you know, inconsistent with the element of water and to give us imagery that speaks to us about the element of water. Uh, the wands, which are actually the fire suit, in the labyrinth tarot they're green, which is complicated again, and air is um, for the swords, it is blue which obviously for most people is instantly reminiscent of water. So this is problematic. So what I would say, first of all, is that you are not alone at all um, in your concerns about the Labyrinth Tarot and, and with your inability to really get a handle on it and work with it from an emotional place. I've read a couple of reviews of the Labyrinth Tarot deck online and I think it is something that people struggle with, that non-traditional colour scheme, certainly. But the other thing that I would say to you, Egyptian, is that the pip cards actually don't appear to be pictorial in the Labyrinth Tarot deck. And that might actually be another way in which you're being hindered. I personally, um, if I had my tarot teaching hat on, would not recommend a non-pictorial deck, or a deck with non-pictorial pips anyway, to a learner. Um, and the reason for that is that imagery with the pip cards gives you such a prompt, it gives you such a description, and it enables you to hang your emotional responses onto the picture, onto the illustration that's clearly playing out. 
non-pictorial pips where you just see you know four wands or two cups with absolutely no kind of indication of what the emotions or the energy is supposed to be behind it is actually really problematic in itself I would say because you've really got nothing to hang your intellectual and emotional response onto when you see a picture and you can kind of interpret what's going on with the figures in that picture or you can read the symbolism of the scenery in that picture that's really helpful and when that's lacking I think you've actually got another obstacle altogether because um, you know you mentioned that you're learning tarot and you're interested in getting more into it and it's not something that you're necessarily really adept at at the moment i would say non-pictorial pips are a bit of a bitch that's my honest um appraisal for you there with regard to non-pictorial pips so that might be something that is also hindering you i would say um just the images are just so useful they're so helpful they help us to tell a story and to really latch on to the energy and in the learning phases i would say to anyone uh, try not to work with a deck with non-pictorial pips if you can because it is just such a struggle for most people. Uh, my first tarot deck was the Marseille Tarot because it was gifted to me and the pips were completely non-pictorial. It was just four coins or two clubs and this for me was just obviously a struggle because I had nothing to really relate to. I had nothing to click into so that might be the issue. But what I would say with regard to the colours being completely not in alignment with what we would traditionally think of as earth, air, fire and water is that maybe you're being called to sit in deep meditation uh, with each colour. Disassociate the colour from the, from the element that you've kind of aligned it with in your mind and that, you know, the popular psyche, the collective psyche, if you like, has aligned each colour within in our minds. I would say just push all of that aside close your eyes and sit in the meditative state with that colour and just keep that colour in mind and really see if you can go deeper than those kind of um, correspondences that we have really kind of made as a blanket statement if you like. I mean of course yes it's obvious that if fire is the suit of wands then we would represent it as red and if water is the suit of cups we'd represent it usually as blue. I totally get that but I think this is probably a challenge to you from a kind of chromotherapy point of view to tune in maybe to how you really feel about each colour and to kind of disassociate yourself from the learned responses and the ordinary correspondences and really really go down deep and see if there's any underlying territory beneath those core correspondences that we've all come to know and love and cherish and think are sensible see if there's anything underneath that see if those colors are really giving off any particular energies to you at this point in your life which actually means something far more potent than these surface responses and this kind of collective um kind of psychic portrayal of what each color means see if you can actually go beneath that and that might be very interesting to you because i think people have such an individual response to each color when we take it away from its associations that we kind of give to it um you know through through logic and through paganism and through you know these things that we use so i would suggest maybe disassociating the color from the element and just sitting with that color in mind and when you close your eyes try and actually get the shade of the color that is used in these cards that might be an interesting thing for you to do i think i really like the way you've chosen to represent the cups which are red in the deck that you have which is very non-traditional and most odd i must admit when i first saw them i thought my god that is so strange that must be really throwing her for a loop but i thought it was really really cool how you decided to associate it with the fiery aspect of the emotional spectrum and that kind of um, urgency and that passion or that anger you know that the fiery responses that come up in the emotional spectrum and i would say that i completely agree with that I would also say that with regard to pentacles being gold, um, I would suggest another way of looking at that. You said that you think of money and material possessions. I think that's really good, and I would do that too. But I would also maybe think about kind of golden fields of corn, that kind of stuff. So you're still getting that feeling of abundance and of matter and of something tangible, but it relates more maybe to things like... Um, love of the earth connecting to the earth and also abundance in other ways um, and achievement and things like that as well so you get that more uh, balanced sense so it's not just really that mentality of, of things being about financial stability i think there could be a danger of slipping into that but if you just bring in things like images of, of full golden fields of corn i think that might be really cool for pentacles for earth and I wanted to suggest with regard to the swords, the swords are blue in the Labyrinth Tarot. 
I would personally suggest, I don't know how much you've worked with the chakra system or how much you know about it, but for me, it wouldn't be that problematic actually, in fact, for swords to be blue in a deck because I work with the chakra system um, quite a lot. And in the chakra system, the throat chakra is traditionally shown as blue. And for me, swords have a lot to do with communication, personal power, debating, standing one's ground, uh, being able to speak for what one believes in and that kind of thing. Communication as well and language, stuff like that. So if you can think of blue as uh, pertaining to the throat chakra, that might be an interesting way for you to explore swords from this point on. And I wanted to say also that you could use blue... Um, as a way to tap into the idea of masculine energy um, you know air is one of the two masculine elements and I think that it's kind of interesting to me that blue is traditionally in kind of like the baby color or you know in gender binary blue is traditionally a masculine color so you could also use blue in association with that masculine energy and that would be a really interesting exploration I think um, and that kind of puts you back on the right track towards traditional color and symbol kind of alignment you know because blue is so traditionally a masculine color so that's another thing i would suggest for the suit of swords um now green um let me just have a quick look sorry i'm refreshing my head okay so ones are green and ones are traditionally the suit of fire i would suggest maybe um thinking about things like green for manifestation for things growing for things coming into being um, abundance energies of the earth transferred into human life and human situations if you think about the fact that there is so much energy and so much life and so much living and dying and, and being born again going on on the earthly realm and i would suggest that that actually closely matches that vibration of fire because fire is all about creation and destruction it's about artistic prowess but it's also about understanding when something needs to die um, it's kind of a, a very very empowered element and i think green could speak to that perfectly if you were to think about potentially green being to do with growth and manifestation and that power that overarching power of the earth coming into being I actually think that if you connect green with earth energy, then I would think about the ways in which earth energy can actually be quite fiery and maybe actually can also be quite brutal because the element of fire is brutal. And I so often say that it is about creation and destruction. And so that might be an interesting avenue for you as well. I think that I have gone through them all. Yeah. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to say to you, Egyptian, is that the artwork in the Labyrinth Tarot is actually, um, as far as I've read from the little reading that I've done online, because I don't own this deck and I've not actually looked at it in depth before, as far as I've read, the artwork is by a very acclaimed fantasy artist. And so I think that the connection that you're making with the artwork is very cool and is obviously something that is quite justified and quite understandable because this guy that, that did these illustrations is very respected in the fantasy art world and apparently a lot of people have simply collected this deck just to have miniature images of, of work that he's done because he is just so enjoyed. So I think that might be something to think of in terms of maybe the connection that you're making is a connection to the work of this fantasy artist. But actually, perhaps after a, a while more of challenging yourself, maybe with some of the advice that I've given, you could actually use this experience with this tarot deck to help you to understand that it's, it's really the attraction to this artist's work. I don't know if you knew of his work before. You may very well have done so. But sometimes I think that the imagery really, really speaks to us, but we can't actually connect it to anything workable, to anything necessarily useful overall. So I think that might be something to think about. Um, if, you, if you end up going through these explorations that I've suggested to you and you still feel like something is a little off, I would suggest um, trying to trade the deck on Eclectic Tarot is one thing that you could do. Um, if you join Eclectic Tarot, it's free to join. Um, you get kind of a basic account and you should get access with the basic free account to the trading forum. And the trading forum is, is literally a place where tarot enthusiasts go to exchange decks that they either no longer want or bought and weren't really interested in, that kind of thing. And you just do a straightforward exchange. No money changes hands. Obviously, you've got to do the postage and packing thing. But essentially, you get a deck that you maybe could get along better with. So if you go through these explorations and you still find that it's not sticking right for you, I would suggest to you and to anybody else watching that it might be useful to go onto Eclectic Tarot and actually seek to trade the deck with somebody who's looking for it for their collection. 
I'd also suggest that you can use it to make art, you can use it um, to brainstorm, you know, you can use it, um, you can use them as bookmarks, you can use them as coasters, you can, you can actually take them and, and recycle them, you can develop them into any number of things. I know a few people in the past have asked me what to do when they lose a card from their deck. And I always say, you know, you can literally just use them in your in your books of shadows, in your um, books of mirrors. You can, you know, make them decorative. You can put one in a frame and hang it on the wall. You know, I don't think any of this stuff is blasphemous. I don't think that um, a tarot deck is necessarily sacrosanct on its uh, on its own and is something that needs to be kept and and treasured. No, absolutely not. I have collaged over decks. I have um, kind of. Um, I've customised them with paint and things like that in the past and I love doing that kind of thing so that's also something that can be really cool too. Um, I'd also suggest Egyptian that you can work with the Major Arcana alone and this is something that if your explorations of the Labyrinth Tarot fails you might wish to consider particularly in relation to the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life, the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Many, many people work with the Major Arcana alone. You can do really effective spreads with the Major Arcana alone. And in a way, the Major Arcana is its own um, all-encompassing system that works in its own right and actually doesn't need the four suits attached to it. You can do a lot with just the Major Arcana alone. And the explorations that you can go into are so deep and so profound, they really can last a lifetime. So what I would suggest, if your explorations of the four suits fail, but you're still really attracted to the majors, it might be a sign that you're only supposed to work with the majors, and it might be a sign, in fact, that you're being called to look into how the major arcana fits in with the Kabbalah tree of life. So that might be an interesting exploration for you, and you could just do some, um, some primary research online about the tree of life, the 22 letters, and how they relate to the major arcana. There's absolutely loads of free information online about that, and that might actually be something that you end up being really into. So kind of one of my first reactions when I heard your response to this deck was work with the majors alone and this is something that I'd say to anyone else who's watching this and finds that actually they connect with the majors but there's not that much of an overt connection to the four suits and maybe they've tried and maybe they just can't seem to make that click. I would say there's absolutely nothing wrong with just focusing on the major arcana and seeing that really as the gift because the more time you can spend focusing on the majors and understanding them as their own holistic system, I would say the more time you spend really getting to grips with, with the true meaning of the spirit that runs through all four of the elements in tarot anyway. Uh, major arcana really is the fifth element, it's spirit, it's what runs through every other suit in the deck. So I think really just separating the Major Arcana and working with it alone is a really good idea. And I would suggest actually for people, even if you're really getting on with your deck at the moment and you're not having a problem with your four suits, I'd suggest still um, spending some time, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months, focusing overtly and solely on the Major Arcana. And I would suggest doing that at least once a year. Definitely. And uh, if you've pathwork with the majors already, do go back to them, pathwork with them again from this new place. Um, you know, if you've developed more in your tarot study, revisit the majors um, and do so with an open mind and an open heart. And you'll understand and see how much your perceptions can change over the course of time. And that's really exciting as well. So that might be something that you want to think about. So each Hebrew letter is, is its own little part of the system. And that might be something that you are just being called to do, is to focus on the majors. And then once you've done that, you might find, in fact, that the four suits kind of come to mean different things to you and come to mean more to you. And you can make that emotional click through working solidly with the major arcana for a time. And this is not something that I'm suggesting to you because you don't enjoy the four suits. This is something that a lot of tarot enthusiasts do. And it is something that is very, very useful. So I would suggest that for you as well. Um... And what I would suggest for anyone who's having problems with any kind of deck, whether it's traditional or non-traditional, if you really feel called to continue working with it, then please do. And then if after a time you feel that it falls flat, the exploration falls flat, don't be disheartened. Try and trade, uh, try and use the tarot deck for something else, or just put it away and see if in the future you can make that connection in a new way at a new time in your life. Um, but if you do feel really called cool to work with it, even though it's frustrating you, and even though there's something about it that doesn't click, then I would suggest it might be there to break down your resistance, and that's actually a really exciting thing, because it gets us looking beyond the standard correspondences that we're used to. And Egyptian, actually, you made a really interesting video, or a couple of really interesting videos a while ago, about getting beneath 
the archetype, getting beneath those surface perceptions that we've come to know and love, and actually going deeper, actually working out what each archetype or each deity, which is based on an archetype, actually means to us on a personal level, and how it can be intrinsic to our own individual human experience. And I actually love that, and I talked about that in my video about masculine and feminine divinity. I totally agree with you and I think actually you could use this um, difficulty that you're having with Labyrinth Tarot to do exactly the same thing with colours and elements. You could really, really go beneath the surface, you could totally um, expand your exploration and see it as maybe this time for you to go beneath your surface explorations and I don't mean that disrespectfully, I totally understand why you are thrown for a loop by the non-traditional colours, I, I certainly am too to an extent, I looked at them and I was like whoa! But sometimes this can be a call, this can really be a call from somewhere deep inside when something shows up in your life that makes you think I might need to go deeper here and I might need to make my own assumptions and my own conclusions that may not be in alignment with the traditional correspondences that we all know and love and that can be an exciting thing to discover for yourself so I really hope this video has been helpful for you and for anyone else who might be kind of grappling with a deck that they're not quite sure about um, I hope it's been a useful video much love guys blessed be